There are 106 days left until the 2022 midterms. Welcome back to the Mary Trump Show strategy sessions, where every week my panel and I try to answer this question. How do we ensure that the Democrats win races at every level of government and hold on to or preferably extend a razor to margins in the House and Senate? Joining me uh, this week, I'm really excited to have this uh, incredible panel. Yakinshore, senior opinion writer and columnist for the Globe, an MSNBC contributor, and sister of podcast. Judy Gold, stand-up comedian, actor, television writer, host of the podcast Kill Me Now, and author of Yes, I Can Say That When They Come for the Comedians, We're All in Trouble. And Molly Jong Fast, author, contributing editor for The Daily Beast, co host of the New York Normal podcast, and writer of the Atlantic newsletter. Wait, what? <laughs> probably, we're all probably saying that a lot. Welcome to all of you. It's so good to have you here under these circumstances. So, um, where to start? Um, it seems like every week, there's a new horror, there's a new way in which the country is backsliding. Uh, there is a way in which the media are once again failing us by focusing on the wrong things and giving people the wrong messages. So um, I'm beginning to think that the, that the best way forward is to understand that everything that's going on, even though it does feel like a multi-front war, it's all of a piece. It's all related, and we need to look at it that way. So, Judy, I want to start with you. Um, how do you think, do you think it's possible to um, come up with a unifying message to help people understand that this is not an election in November about policy? I mean, basically, fuck policy at this point. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is an election about what happens to this country. Oh, absolutely. And I was, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if you saw this thread today about this one. I, I don't know. She might be in her 20s. She's a social worker saying, you can't make me vote. Uh, you know, even if you eliminate $10,000 of my debt, that's still 157000 I owe. You need to do better. I'm not voting. And it's this sort of attitude i i feel like we need a messenger we don't have the right messenger and i feel like we're not great at messaging in the first place uh and if we had a messenger i don't know if you heard of barack obama he was an excellent uh, did you have you okay yeah he was an excellent oh the guy who's married to michelle yes yes that Got guy it. Cool. Um, and I feel that we really, I mean, there's so much going on, but you're right. We need one, one thing to carry it home. Your, our existence as a democracy is on the line. Your civil rights are on the line. We need it's so frustrating to me that these conspiracy theories, these lies, the the Supreme Court, uh, which is now dictating how we live and how we breathe and what we can do, the misogyny. Someone needs to take find something, a messenger and a message and shove it down these people's throats because I really don't think... I don't know if anyone, I mean, besides us here and some people we know are as scared as I am. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, if we have really uh, gotten that message across. Uh, we, we haven't. And, and Kim, one of the things that's kind of blowing my mind recently is that the Republicans are basically giving the Democrats all sorts of ammunition. Unf oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Um, fuck. Anyway, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. We are. And the, 
the problem with that is that one, they don't seem to be utilizing it in a way that resonates. And two, it comes at such great cost. Yeah. I mean, we, we saw what happened in Texas and 10 days before that, another 18 year old murdered 10 people, I think eight of whom were black and he murdered them because they were black. Yep. The Supreme Court with its shadow dockets and its complete illegitimacy is poised to take away uh, gun safety laws, which they don't have the guts to do right now, and obviously a woman's right to choose. So so it is frustrating because we it seems like there's a lot we could be working with. Yeah, I mean, I think so there's a lot of things going on here. One of them is beyond just the Democrats failure to message message well is that we are seeing the culmination of the republicans long game mm -hmm. right on all the issues yeah. that you've mentioned the u.s supreme court republicans have found a way to in, to impress upon voters the importance of that for more than a decade mm -hmm. whereas even when Merrick Garland was being held up. I remember there was a Democratic, you know, photo op uh, press conference in front of the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court. And I went there and I was asking Congress, uh, Senate member after Senate member after Senate member, well, what's the message in the election that you're messaging? And they couldn't tell me. Because they, when you talk to Republicans about the Supreme Court or about the judiciary at large, they're like conservative values. We need to have conservative judges. We need to, and Democrats say, you know, they talk about justice and these like, you know, ideals and stuff, and they just didn't get the importance. And so Democrats are 10 years behind Republicans in the long game when it comes to the courts. Democrats are behind Republicans. Republicans realize that as long as they can talk, they have their code words, you know, good guy with a gun. If there's a mass shooting, you talk about the need for a good guy with a gun, the need to arm teachers, you know, completely unsupported by data or evidence of any kind, less than 1% of the time is a mass shooter stopped by somebody else with a gun, right? Doesn't matter. That messaging works. They've tested it, it works. And as long as they can forge forward, take the money from the gun lobby, take the support from the gun lobby, forget the NRA, it, the yeah. NRA, it, it doesn't need to be here anymore. It's right. so fortified. They know they can get beyond that. Republicans have been shipping away at abortion access for more than a decade. There are already so many states where there are two or fewer providers even left. This didn't happen overnight. The opinion from the SCOTUS hasn't even come out yet. So th this is where the Democrats have failed. They have failed in keeping up with the strategic way Republicans have focused on this. And what I think is even more frustrating since 2020, since all of the urgency has bubbled to the surface, since we have seen an insurrection, Democrats still haven't done it. How did Democrats get control of the White House and the Senate in 2020. It was the black voters in places like Georgia that came out mm -hmm. and said, nope, we're not doing this Trump yep. thing. And we're going to come in the middle of a pandemic when we're in danger and vote because this is urgent. And what did they ask for? What did the church members who galvanized vans to get people to the polls? What did people, they wanted um, not just social justice, but voting rights. I keep hearing that. And this administration has ignored that. So what I fear more so than Judy talking about the young people or like what's in this for me, and that's a fear. But I fear the the loyal Democratic voters who risked their lives to vote in 2020 saying, oh, my God, what have they done? Nothing. Right. Nothing. And yeah. why should I do this again? It's and I, I do want to talk more about the long game. And I, you know, I I think that they've been going after Roe since 1973. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, guns, maybe not quite as long, but close because uh, mm -hmm. it that's a more recent phenomenon. Um, but Molly. What is up with that? Why does the Demo the Democrats refuse or seem incapable of pandering? And I want them pander to your base for god's sakes because you know what that means 
that for for the Republicans, that means taking away rights, the voting rights of black people. It means taking away uh, the rights of women and, um, you know, pregnant people to plan their families and, and raise their children in safe environments and, you know, have bodily autonomy. For us, it means giving people the right to the franchise, which has once again been taken away from them. It means the right to let your, Jesus Christ, your baby go to school Ugh. and come home every day. It means giving people health care, like giving people free college tuition. Well, what is up with that? We need to pander. And I don't mean that in a pejorative way at all. Pay it back for their loyalty and all of the work and the sacrifices they've done. Yeah, you know, I'm actually writing about this right now for tomorrow in my newsletter. And it's funny because it does seem like Democrats are allergic to giving their base a win, right? Like voting rights is not even, shouldn't even be partisan, right? All they wanted, these women who turned out in Georgia, who gave Biden Democrats the Senate, was to be able to vote was for you to protect their vote. This is not even, should not be partisan. In a normal world, this would not be partisan. And it strikes me that the Biden administration seems just uninterested in giving these people a win when they are the people who put you in office. And I don't understand it, especially because the the sort of Republicans are obsessed with their base, right? They'll do anything their base wants, no matter how deplorable, right? I mean, their base wants crazy stuff. They're willing to do it. And their base is, is quite frankly, the lowest common denominator, racist, sexist, anti-LGBT, they're T, Q. There's no world in which these Republicans won't go in order. I mean, a reason why they're never going to do anything bipartisan on guns is because they don't want to depress enthusiasm for their base. You know, if they were to make even the most sensible, you know, even just raise the age of purchase for an AR-15 to 21, which is like the most sensible minor thing, they Republicans won't do it because they don't want to get their base depressed. Yeah. They want to make sure their base is jacked for the midterms, that, you know, that guns are on the line. Meanwhile, Democrats, you know, we can't, we're sorry, we can't give you voting rights. We can't give you this. We can't give you that. First of all, they absolutely can. Chuck Schumer can go in there tomorrow and be like, look, Manchin, we're going to do a 50 vote cutout for go to, by, for 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 guns. And if you are not going to come along, then we are going to blast you with ads. We're going to make your life a misery. We're going to have protesters outside your office. You know, I mean, cinema is going to lose her seat in a primary. That is already clear. If yeah. Democrats aren't, if democracy isn't so completely fucked by then, which again, we don't even know if it will be, excuse my French. Um, hmm. But like no, we're, we will be fucked in 2022. Right. For but, this. but Manchin, you know, make him uncomfortable. He's that one vote. Like, do it. You know, Chuck, this is on Chuck Schumer, right? Nancy Pelosi has, has passed a bunch of different laws. I mean, that have passed the House bills and they can go to Schumer and Schumer can do this. I mean, the whole idea that they can't do it is bullshit. They just say that. And so I am quite dis disappointed in this sort of lack of leadership at the Senate level. And I think this is a Chuck Schumer problem as much as it's anything. And Biden certainly can do more executive orders, but they will get, you know, sort of disappeared. The other thing about this cutout for a filibuster for gun rights is that if they do it, and this very conservative Supreme Court overturns it, which they probably will, you at least are able to show that this Supreme Court is out of you know, that they, they've overturned Roe and now they're going for guns and they're out of whack and you really need to expand the court. And if you don't go through the motions of politics, then why are we sending these people into office? Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I want to, uh, as a quick aside, um, you know, one of the things the Republicans do is co-opt language, they co-opt our language, but they also make sure that their chosen phrases are the ones that the media pick up on. So instead of anti-choice, they're pro-life, which is an obscene joke. They're not, not pro anybody's life. Um, and it's funny, like we both just said the word base as the media does. And what that does, um, even though, again, it's like this knee-jerk thing, Republican base, Democrat, it 
it makes them equal right. somehow. And they're not. The yeah, Republican yeah. base is a bunch of white supremacist, misogynist, anti-Semitic, anti-immigrant, evil people right. who care more about their fucking guns than they do about our children. Right. So I think that's part of it. Right. Judy, we need to be much more aware of when we're letting them off the hook and letting them drive the narrative. I right. Mean, well, well, I think we always let them drive yeah. the narrative because we are reactionary. We react, you know, and, you know, it, it's like a, a bad relationship. You, yeah. Someone has the power. The other person reacts. They get exactly what they want and they can build on that reaction. And and I feel like, uh, you, you know, all the misinformation, all of the uh, conspiracy theories, all, you know, Fox News. The fact that that it people watch that more than any other, and it's it's not even a news show. It's news and ent entertainment news. Um, we have dumbed this country down uh, so much, uh, and we, I, you know, I I I, I cannot. I, I just sometimes want to just break into the Congress and get in front of them and say, what the fuck? Somebody speak up. Do you see the way they speak? They're not in, they do not work out of fear. And I feel like we, yes. we are fearful. You know, all those fuckers were afraid of your fucking asshole uncle. That's why they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and so... <laughs> And that's how they, they're like, oh, okay, I'll shut up now. And that's exactly what they all sounded like. Actually. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you're right. And, and that's what they do. They're afraid of his reaction. Um, and we, we operate mm. out of fear. I think it's, it, and we need to get some leadership there and people with balls. Well, right. I, I'm going to, I'm going to take that. I was thinking of fear in, in a different way though, Judy. Okay. What I think about, and you're, you're talking about, wanting the reaction and one thing republicans are very good at mm -hmm. is using fear yes. to drive the reaction oh absolutely so this is how you get and this is where i'm going to disagree with you a little bit mary because i think there are a lot of people who vote republican who don't see themselves as white supremacist evil awful people they are the people who had black lives matter signs on their lawn oh yeah right? i'm talking about the, they're the same but I'm, yeah I'm but listen about... but these are the same people who will vote republican because right. they have been convinced that their white children are being taught to be ashamed of themselves for being white in school. No such thing is happening. But they right. they are easily, that is terrifying to them that their children are being taught that America is not the America that they learned, that they were taught when they were children and that somehow white people are evil and they don't want that. These are the same people who put the Black Lives Matter in front of, do you know what I mean? I right. think that's yeah, what yeah, people yeah. are failing to, And but Republicans are so good at using fear, whether it's on immigration, whether it's on CRT yes. and all this stuff to motivate people. Meanwhile, Democrats are fearful of alienating. So they won't do. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what, yes, absolutely. That's it, because they're afraid, oh, that. if we go too deep on trying to get police reform, then we're going to get the police unions mm -hmm. mad at us. If we go yeah. too deep on voting reform, then we're going to look like the, you know, they are so afraid to do anything. Right. Kim, I agree. That, I that totally, is their big, uh, biggest Achilles heel. Totally agree with you. I was saying that, but I don't think Republicans pander to the suburban people who voted for Yunkin, I think they pander to the white supremacists, mm. right? And then the suburban people are the ones they're willing to make afraid of these total, yeah. totally fictional things. And I honestly think that those people are more dangerous because they have no self-awareness and they're so easily manipulable. Um, the question though is how did and this is just this is a specific question, but it speaks to a larger problem. How is it possible that Glenn Youngkin made it through that campaign without being called a racist on a daily basis? How? Right, Molly? I mean, it seems like these things get teed up for us, um, whether it's stoking fear about something that's not even taught in, in uh, public schools, K through 12 public schools, whether it's... Um, 
lying about what needs to be done, like guns aren't the problem or calling us fascists or calling us groomers, the Democratic response is always, oh, you know, we don't want to go there. We're, we're just going to talk about the kitchen table issues. Well, meantime, 40 percent of the country is starting to believe that all Democrats are pro pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. So. <laughs> Molly, what, what is this? What and look, this is this is not about changing how the media work or changing uh, elected Democrats. Because I, I don't know about you guys, I have no access to anybody. Uh, there's nobody I can talk to. Like I would love to, like you said earlier, I would love to go up to somebody like Schumer and just grab them by the lapels. I'm just kidding, NSA. I really wouldn't do that. But just say what? What are you thinking? Like you have so many options here. Like, shoot the lock off your wallet. Give Joe Manchin however many billions of dollars he wants. Bribe him to do the right thing because he's being bribed to do the wrong thing. Well, it's interesting. Um, you're coming to me, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said um, your name. But okay. it was a while ago. Okay. <laughs> um, it's interesting. I got heated. <laughs> it's interesting to me because you do. I mean, for sure, this group uh Again, the the difference between Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer is that Mitch McConnell will do anything to win and Chuck Schumer will not. And so as much as, I mean, look, does Mitch McConnell have a smarter caucus? No, but people are, I mean, if anything, is a stupider caucus, but but he has, I mean, people think of him as the majority leader still, and he's not, right? He's still setting the tone. And I think ultimately... The problem here is a Democratic failure to lead and Republicans are taking up the vacuum. And what they don't realize is that when Republicans get power back, if they do, it's going to be a bloodbath. I mean, they yeah. are going to they are unfettered and unhinged and they have they are now all operating on or not all, but most are operating on the Trump under the Trump rule book. I mean, look at Elise Stefanik, right? The number uh, Republican. Do I have to? <laughs> well, she's a good example, though, is someone yeah, who came in as a sort of youngkin type, right? Yeah. Obviously what's in their hearts and minds is, is you know, whatever, Plato. But the point is she came in as a youngkin type. And now in this, uh, you know, in this Trump Republican party, she's now calling everyone a groomer. So obvious, this is what we have to look forward to if these people win the midterms is just unfettered, you know, all these people playing by Trump's rules. And Trump by Trump's rules was bad, but Trump was also a little bit stupid. No offense to the gene pool there, but you know, and, and <laughs> my theory is it skips a generation, but okay. you know. And undisciplined. And when you get someone who's disciplined, like a Stefanik, and who has no sort of bare, you know, no interest yeah. in truth or any of that. I mean, I think we're in for a world of hurt that we haven't even sort of visualized. I agree on that. No. Uh, we yeah, same. Hey, Kim, I want to go back to you because I think I cut you off. Um, no, you didn't. So, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go back to you. Anyway. I thought you did. <laughs> right? I did. I, I, did <laughs> no, too. I didn't I'm notice. Kidding. Um, I'm kidding. So I think one of the reasons this election seems so onerous is because of where we are in history i hear people who understand the sweep of history who who know american history specifically who say if we lose democracy which again i know it's unwieldy but america's not a democracy now it never has been but it has the potential to be one right so we will lose that potential if democrats lose in november it will be decades before we get that back. And I'm thinking decades. Uh, there's a clock ticking on something called climate change. Mm -hmm. We don't have the luxury of time. Yeah. So in that context, it's even more urgent, right? Yeah. I mean, the urgency is real. I mean, climate change is just one place where it's urgent that we don't have uh, the cushion. We're already seeing the the effects of it and it's uh, one problem for democrats um that is is uh, a part of that is the place that we are seeing the biggest effects first are on the most vulnerable people who are not a part of the republican base and who they don't feel an urgency to act on it and so they're 
this is one of many areas where Democrats are both morally and politically more motivated than the other party because it is harming the people who are most vulnerable first, uh, but it will harm all of us very, very quickly. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, history has taught us a lot of things. I, I think I used to think, okay, after, if you look at history, after every bit of progress, there is some regress, right? Mm -hmm. um, after this, you know, every civil rights movement only could last a couple of years before everybody's like, all right, I don't want to think about this anymore. And I want to, mm -hmm. you know, in the 60s, it lasted, you know, after about 1968, everybody was like, okay, this is too much. It's too much assassination. It's too much death, too much complications. I just want to go to the disco, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's accelerated. So we had 2020 and we had all this awakening about justice and what it meant and every, and I feel like everybody's fatigued of that now. And that, that moment is, you know, people just want to get on the other side of this pandemic, get back to their lives, get past inflation, inflation, oh, inflation. And it's just, I feel like Democrats keep missing moments. And I feel, I fear that they've missed this moment, that we have not had enough progress. We had some acknowledgement, some understanding Mm -hmm. But we didn't actually have the pro we didn't get a civil rights act. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't get a voting rights act. We didn't get all the stuff that was done in the 60s before everybody got tired and went to the disco. We just got a lot of marches and nothing actually progressed. So I actually fear that we're missing the lessons of history and seeing yeah. where we can go, including climate change, including voting rights, including police reform, including gun reform. And Republicans haven't missed it. They stack the Supreme Court in a way that we see where everything is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know that this will be the same. I, th I think I'm, you know, I, what I used to think that history sort of gives me some comfort. It no longer does. Mm -hmm. I am with you there. And it's uh, it makes every day hard. I mean, the fact that like who would have thought uh after the election was called for Joe Biden, that things would be worse now than they were. Now, listen, I understand that things would be infinitely worse if <laughs> Donald were in still in the Oval Office. That that goes without saying. But I mean, in terms of the divisions and in terms of um, gun violence and the Supreme Court and 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 COVID and climate change, it's it's just it's unrelenting and. And Judy, just like b building on what Kim was saying, it's it's as if the Democrats are so tied into this fantasy that they need to work with the other side. And you know, my what I think is, if you are trying to work with this Republican Party and and you know, trying to negotiate with them and compromise with them, you are making common cause with fascists. And that is not going to end well. Um, so, you know, you wrote this fabulous book, everybody should read it, uh, about the First Amendment, uh, specifically through the lens of comedy, but it obviously had a much broader um, uh, scope um, or focus, I should say. So the other thing that the, the Dems seem to be missing that seems, again, like a no-brainer to focus on is that the Republicans are so selective about what they protect and what they don't and what they go after and what they don't and what can be modified and what can't, right? Well, absolutely. And they control the narrative. Yeah. So, you know... When Kim was speaking, I kept thinking, it's it's about integrity. You know, we're 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 just saying, well, we have integrity and they don't. No one gives a shit anymore. <laughs> okay? No one fucking cares. Women have no rights. The racism in this country is out of fucking control. The um gun violence, the fact that you can't send your child to school. These are things that they repeat the same shit over and over again. They, and we need to play out of their playbook and stop being like, we're the better people. 
We're going to reach over the aisle. No, these people are <laughs> dumb. They're dumb. The fact, Marjorie, is there anyone vicious. as, right, they're evil and vicious. They could give two shits. Did you see that Abbott thing when he was rehearsing how he was going to speak in a, um, uh, th there's a video of him doing uh, a sound checky kind of thing. And he's like, I'm going to talk like this. And then I will talk like this. I think they're not human. I <laughs> right. swear to God. And, it, and, you know, there's a reason that Zelensky is not backing. to, And there's no coincidence mm. that he's a comedian <laughs> and, and a leader. Because we are fearless. We speak truth to power. Right. And comedy is a weapon. Yes. And that's why Al Franken was such a great senator, but we had to get rid of him. Um, you think, how many abortions do you think your uncle's paid for? I have no particular knowledge of that. But, right. Um, I no, wouldn't if, be surprised. All right. I, if I won't ask you that. Right. No, I mean, I'm not going to put you on know, the spot but... like that. How many, come on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these people are such fucking hypocrites. And we need someone to be a fearless leader. And stop with the integrity stuff. Like, look, aren't we nice people? You know, yeah, we are. We, we are on the right side of history, but we need to tell people, look, as much as they're saying they're taking your guns away, your kids are not going to be able to go to school. Yeah, they're taking our children away. <laughs> right. For their guns. Right. Um, yeah. It, it's... And they're dumb. Like the fact, I mean, do we have anyone thing, as dumb as Lauren Boebert in our uh, in the D Democratic Party? Louis Gomer. No. Oh no. No. Well, let's. Okay. I, I want to be clear on one thing. The, the the one difference between Democrats and Republicans right now is Democrats are much more diverse than Republicans. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Republicans are much more homogenous. So I don't think that that is true for every elected Democrat. Right. Uh, no, what you're not. saying, but it certainly it seems that. The president of the United States is someone who still believes that America is the same way it was 20, 30 years ago. And in my reporting, I've talked to Democrats who have mm -hmm. expressed that sort of frustration that he Absolutely. is perhaps not the person of the moment. And the thing that is stunning to me is he was Barack Obama's vice president. Right. He was the vice president of the man who got more death threats at that time than any other previous president who spurred the resurgence of the white nationalist movement in our country in backlash to the election of the first black. Like, how can he not understand how America has changed? But he still has this belief, even in the words that he said about the people in charge in charge of trying to come up with some new solution on Gunga, which whatever, I give it no credence at all. But it's mm -hmm. like, he still thinks this is like Kennedy McCain stuff. Right. But you know, And that it, America has not existed for so long. So I'm, I'm worried about that. I would add that the leader, a lot of the democratic leadership is there with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, one of yep. the things the Republicans did was they have, a, you know, a sort of term limits on their leadership. And so, I mean, Mitch McConnell is old, but, in, you know, terrifyingly effective. But, uh, you know, we have a very old leadership in the House. I mean, yeah. I think Pelosi has been very effective, but she's, you know, uh, you know, and Steny Hoyer. I mean, this is an old group of people. James yeah. Clyburn. Yeah. It's a wait your turn the thing, whereas 80, Democrat, yeah. Republicans will be like, oh, we will put Stefanik in leadership right, in a right. minute. Yeah, right. Not, uh, Cotton or Hawley right. who are in their mm -hmm. forties, right? And I think some of these people. I mean, certainly not true, you know. And Clyburn is it is it you know an elder statesman who? I mean, there certainly is a lot, but I mean, the this leadership is very is is very old in the Democratic Party, and compared to the Republican leadership, it's a it's a big ga chasm. So I mean I well I think that that you know I think that's something that the Democrats should be talking about. I also think that Democrats aren't necessarily rewarded. Like if you look at, I mean, I think a lot about Reverend Warnock because he is a, he's only been in office for a very short time. He's the twelfth black senator, right? Ever. Right. And, and I mean, he has done a lot of really good stuff. I'm not mm -hmm. sure the Democrat, and you know, he's out there a lot too and he's i mean he's been really 
very much about serving his community and also sort of showing people he's up for re-election, right? That's a super important seat for Democrats. I, you know, the, I feel like mainstream media has not like, you know, that the sort of good Democrats don't necessarily get the same kind of coverage that the Republicans do. You know, I mean, I just don't. Not as entertaining. Yeah. Right. But I know that, you know, I know a lot of young people, ju- uh, yeah, they're disillusioned by, by the, by Biden's age, you know? And, you know, and when I watch him sometimes, I'm like, oh, I just, just a little more, a little, um, and I think you're right. I think that's so true about how they're, they're like, oh, you're young. You're going to, you're our lap dog. Go here. Here's your, here's your, um, podium. Go for it. But and- a, lot of, a lot of times I think Biden is actually better than like, because Trump has like lowered expectations and he's like, he's brained up. He gets up there. He's okay. I mean, I think right. he's, you know, he's, he's decent. Not, right. You he's know. Like Barack Obama, but no one else in the Democratic Party is, you know. Right. I and, mean, if they had one ounce of the passion that Chris Murphy had when he was speaking. Right. You know, that's that's what we need. Um, We need someone out there saying, look. Right. This or is the, what they're doing. The passion Elizabeth Warren showed after the, Absolutely. Uh, the leak. Absolutely. Um, and Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, but it, part of part of it is that there's always this double standard. Uh, I think a lot of that is media driven. You know, like Molly just said, uh, what's her name, Green or Bobert or yeah. Gates, they're going to get more attention than somebody who's just doing the work like Jamie Raskin or right. Amy Klobuchar or whatever, whatever. Um, but part of it too is, and, and I think this is what, what you're all agreeing with is that the democratic leadership. And I, again, not all Democrats, clearly there are plenty of Democrats in the Senate and the house who understand where we are and what we're facing. But Democratic leadership, including President Biden, they're living, they're, you know, they think that these are their colleagues. They need to be collegial. They need to, right. you know, whatever. Um, and they're misreading what is what is going on. And therefore, they are not coming up with the kind of strategies that are necessary. And I, I have to say, I don't think it has to do with Leading with integrity. I don't think leading with integrity is the mistake. I think giving the other side any respect is the mistake. Because- well, that's what I mean. I, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't okay. think. I think that they are uh, leaning more on that. You know, we're not going to do that because we're not those kind of people. Well, then figure out another way. Right. We don't. Well, I, to- I think. I think the president is doing that. I think the president is leading with integrity and thinking about America in a certain way and thinking about politics in a certain way. I think Democrats think that they're being politically savvy and thinking about the next election. And that gets me back to the fear thing. Yeah. Right. They don't right. want to get they don't want. Oh, they don't want to alienate these people or alienate that those people and alienate. The, and it's, it's once you start talking about alienating people, I'm like, you already lost. Like you right. already yeah. lost. You need to motivate right. the people to come vote for you. Don't worry about yeah. alienating. Don't worry about not using using this term and being afraid of getting out in front and being afraid of the suburban white women. I mean, that's that's the Democrats, the congressional Democrats problem. Biden is different. Biden is thinking about the world in, a, in an entirely different way. But but I think you're but Biden's mistake is is that he thinks that there's still bipartisanship that by is mm-hmm. still something to be to be desired. And, you know, sometimes I think imagine if instead of Mer- Merrick Garland, whatever his name is, Garland, he had nominated somebody like Kentaji Brown Jackson. I mean, oh, seriously, man, like, I'm not entirely sure that Mitch McConnell would have gotten away with it. Um, but they're, the Democrats yeah. always seem to be trying to um, make the wrong people comfortable, I yeah. guess, is, is maybe yeah, yeah, the way yeah, to yeah. put it, right? Yep. Yeah. 100%. So, 
And now here we find ourselves um, with a 6-3 radical, <sighs> illegitimate Supreme Court. Again, partial. I think, um, Kim, I think you started us off uh, by this way by saying that it's because the Democrats do such a shitty job of helping us understand why the Supreme Court matters. Mm -hmm. And which is so weird to me because honestly, it's the only thing that matters because it determines oh, everything else. Exactly. Right? You know? I mean, we're learning that. I think Americans are learning that. They didn't realize the power that the Supreme Court held. Because I think a lot of Americans believed in what the Democrats said was that like, it's justice and it's a constitution, you know, it's right. it's impartial and it's the and Republicans saw clearly, no, this is a this is politics. Mm -hmm. We need the courts in order to advance what we want to do to mm -hmm. solidify our power because our numbers are dwindling. Mm -hmm. And they did it. And, and the, the Democrats fact, didn't right. see that coming. And the fact that that for for how how many how many months with with Merrick Garland that they wouldn't even meet with him, and that's okay. It's almost a year in right. an election year, and right. they did not make that an election year issue in right. twenty sixteen. Right. 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 Merrick Garland sat on ice for a, almost a year, right? And they did not make that a camp. I mean, that is that's the biggest piece of political malpractice in in recent history absolutely and i think that mitch mcconnell is the greatest traitor to this country since oh, robert e lee beyond. and nobody can convince me otherwise um although there are plenty of people competing with him for that honor <laughs> um but what's fascinating to me is also that garland was nominated before the election started so no vote has been no ballot had been cast nope. and meanwhile um Amy Handmaid Barrett um, People were voting. was it like 60 30 million days. votes had been cast 30 already. days or something like that yeah, the, from her nomination to the confirmation. Yep, was, that's right. So, yep. but, you know, Molly, but, I think the last time we spoke, you said, and this, I never thought about it this way, but I think you're right. And I think it's going to get worse with all these Supreme Court decisions. You said that America is really five countries. Yeah. Or it should be split up into five countries. What I'm concerned about with um, Roe and the gun issue, now we see that California is moving to do a huge buyback program, I think, in the style of Australia, which, by the way, has not had a mass shooting since they did the buybacks of uh, assault weapons. Um, my concern is that that the country, it's going to go state by state. You know, the state is allows abortions, uh, you know, abortions are legal and guns are regulated sanely. And the state, neither of those things is true. So it's going to be like this checkerboard. Right. <laughs> um, and this Supreme, this Supreme Court is going to cut down the California buyback program because uh, clearly that that's going to happen. They're going to, you know, they're trying to get rid of the uh, New York Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, mm -hmm. which made it very difficult to get a concealed carry permit in New York, a very densely populated place. We don't want concealed carry in the state. They're going to overturn that. So um isn't isn't it possible isn't that enough for democrats to uh isn't that enough material for democrats to work with or am i just you know and what i mean by that is incentive to expand the supreme court you know i used to think the supreme court should add uh, five seats would still make it an odd number, right? And I spoke to Ellie Mistel, and he's like, no, we need to add like 14 or 15 or whatever, and we need to have economists on there, and we need to have climate scientists on there, et cetera. And I'm beginning to think he's right. What is the pro What is it going to take? Well, I mean, or just put term limits in the Supreme Court yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. I mean, that's the thing. It's yeah. like we, you know, say like, all right, that's it. We have 20-year, 30-year term limits period paragraph like i you know 
again, the problem is we have a democratic leadership that does not think outside the box. They think like it's, you know, 1992 before Newt Gingrich, and they think that politics can be workable. And I think that I think that all evidence proves that's not true. Right. The, so, the rules have changed and they haven't changed with the rule. It's like, look, I'm a performer. I'm a comedian. It used to be that you had to write your material. And when you got on stage, you had one shot um, and that was it. And now, you know, you had to be prepared. You had to, if you were going to headline a show, you had to have the hour of material. Now a YouTube person, a YouTube, a TikTok person, sorry. Um, uh, wow. You're, uh, hmm. Sorry. Cause we're you just, uh, whatever. You, I'm sorry. A TikTok, <laughs> someone can go on TikTok, have some stupid viral video and will be hired to headline a club. Yeah. They don't know how to do stand up. They don't yeah. know what they're doing. Those people leave there thinking, I'm never going to another stand-up show if that's what stand-up is. But the club owner made their money for the weekend. And meanwhile, a seasoned comic is sitting at home thinking, what the fuck? And that's what happened. The rules have changed, and we're still playing by these old rules. They're different, and we've got to adapt to it. Yeah, Yeah. and I think right now people are listening, particularly when it comes to the Supreme Court, they're waking up. I used to be very against uh, expanding the court because I just thought if Democrats expanded by two, then Republicans expand by five, then Democrats expand by seven. And it would just just really mess the court up in a way that... So I've actually changed my mind on that because I realize now the reason that we have nine justices is that at the time there were nine circuits in the US yep. Supreme Court, and there's a justice assigned to each circuit when it comes to considering appeals. So right now we have 11 circuits. So I think if the Democrats come up with a reasonable plan, 18 year term limits, 11 justices, because there are 11 circuits, one justice per circuit so that we can even the caseload, even the load of, of uh, writing opinions, it's really reasonable and it's hard for someone else to come up and say, no, we need 14, like 14 why? Um, and and just come up with a reasonable way to say eleven. It's still an odd number, um, and and term limits that that could get the attention of the American people and get support. But again, there's I don't know why there isn't the will to actually propose something reasonable that would be hard to assail and hard to undo. But Kim, it's a, you know what's infuriating is that what never gets mentioned is that Mitch McConnell changed the size of the right. Supreme Court. Yeah. It was eight for almost a year or actually right. over a year because yep. he would not because because of him. Yes, he exactly. did. Exactly. So we just had that happen. Same yeah. thing with a fucking filibuster, right? Molly, I mean, okay, I David Rothkopf said to me a while ago, Democrats bring a 30-page white paper <laughs> to a gunfight. Mm-hmm. And that's like this whole Supreme Court committee it's like we don't need a committee we know what needs to be done and that's the thing we know what needs to be done and by having a committee it make it i think the message that gets sent to people is that it's complicated yeah and you know well he didn't want to do it the committee was because he didn't want to do anything yeah. that was his way out yeah. he got pinned on the campaign trail and he was like oh i'll do a committee that was yeah. never meant to actually do anything yeah. well that's Awesome. Great strategy. I mean, come, you know, <laughs> it's this problem that Democrats don't want to put wins on wins on the board. You know, yeah. student debt, cancel $10,000. Just do it. It's, you know, like it's a yeah. win on the board. Like you can say, yep. $5 people in- will complain. Who cares? Right. Right. The $5. same pe- people are going to complain whether it's 10,000 or it's a total right. 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 Yeah. dying because they can't afford insulin. And there are a lot of diabetics in this country. And it's like a stupid, you know, $35 insulin is like, do that so that when you go on the trail, you can say, look, you know, inflation is a problem. First of all, the other thing that just makes me crazy is inflation is a problem everywhere. We're actually better off than Europe because we have full employment. And gas prices. Right, and gas prices too. But the thing is, I mean, I think, so that's one thing where I feel like nobody ever says like, Well, the rest of the world is actually worse off. But the other thing that I think is really like, just put a few wins on the board, $35 insulin, $10,000 of student debt. At least when you're out there, you can say, you know, you may not like us, 
but the other guy <laughs> doesn't believe in democracy. And also, you know, you're not going to die, at, you know, not being able to afford your insulin. Right. And that I think that's a that's a really good point. It's about these huge issues. It's about keeping people safe, caring about their health and well-being. Um, and it's about democracy. It's literally, literally about where this country is going to go and who is going to be included and who's going to be excluded. Democrats want to include everybody. Republicans only want to include people who look, think, act, and hate like they do, right? So it, does, it doesn't seem like the messaging should be that, that difficult. Um, and yet, Judy, like one of the things that's kind of frustrating is, like Molly just said, okay, people may not understand the Supreme Court. They may not understand uh, climate change. People, people are busy. People work hard. Uh, the media does a terrible job, generally speaking. Um, but, you know, again, like Molly said, get some wins on the board. Right. You know, like free cancel college debt and we might get some Gen Z people voting. <laughs> right. That's all do we need. something, do yeah. something to motivate these people and to also let them know that their vote matters. Like yeah. it is, you know, it's important. I mean, the, the, the number one example of freedom of speech is voting. Um, that's where you have your voice in this country. But Use you know what? But they're, white you, people suck. Like white people, like they should care that other people aren't allowed are to not vote. A babe, other right. people, you know, I there was one time in my entire life I had to wait more than five minutes to vote, and it was in the 2020 election. And I had to wait 20 minutes. And wow. people brought me bottles of water. No, I'm just kidding about that part. <laughs> but seriously, if somebody had brought me a bottle of water, that person wouldn't have been arrested. So, you know, the Republicans are so fucking wily about how to keep people of color, you know, disenfranchised. Right. Um, but Judy, like, it's it's on us. Like, what what is it? Like, what? why doesn't that resonate? I find that one of the most... It's it's not baffling. I mean, I understand it, but it's infuriating. It is infuriating, right? That that even the Democrats take it for granted. The it, Democrats it's also vote. You know, it should be a national fucking holiday. Yes. Uh, it should be people. You know, all. I, it should be illegal should... to close down polling places. Absolutely. Especially when but it's no just one's totally talking racist. about this. No one's talking about uh you know how much harder they make it for people of color to vote. Like and if 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 it was easier for people of color to vote, we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. And uh well, that's we the other thing should too, though. Like, everything ha say that again. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think it what's really important to to be mindful about democratic leadership is and democratic voters who aren't black or brown um how how many elections can you just take people for granted mm -hmm. like seriously you know you guys have to vote for us because otherwise everything will be terrible right. we're not going to do right, any right, right, no right. other choice right you know Right. And look, and again, look at what Republicans have done. I, I keep bringing this. You're saying nobody's talking about this. I try to talk about it, Judy. I really do. Right. The no, January 6th, who, yeah. what were the states being contested? Oh, oh my God. Pennsylvania, Philly, Michigan, Detroit, <laughs> uh, Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee, and Georgia, Atlanta. Atlanta. Right. It was all about the black voters. And who was yep. standing outside the Capitol? all the dumb white people but, the, but oh, don't give them that much credit they were they weren't just they weren't dumb they were vicious hateful nazis who confederate flag carrying confederate white wearing, nationalist insignia wearing right. uh you know Aus camp auschwitz t-shirts oh, and please. w you know six whatever if Democrats, I mean, Democrats still have even a slimmed down voting rights bill, right? Yeah. Like they had, you know, they put in 
And I sort of fault Nancy Pelosi for this too, because she loves a, like a gigantic bill, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> everything they federalized elections in that bill it did shockingly there were not 10 sensible republicans and nobody it was a too big a bill it was too big to yeah. succeed and you know they didn't they weren't you know they should have made a slim down voting rights bill that did stuff like protected people's rights to vote yeah. in atlanta and mm -hmm. in michigan and in the states you know georgia not atlanta in the states where voting rights are under attack and yeah. and he, they didn't do that and and like that's real malpractice i mean there's still time to pass a slim down voting rights bill and you see if you have those 10 republicans and if you don't you pass it with a cutout or you put it in reconciliation i mean there's no reason why you can't fire the parliamentarian right None. republicans fire the parliamentarian democrats won't do that because they're too scared but they can fear yeah you know, and this is the thing. We're running out of time, but I, I just want to. Uh, oh, I'm so I, angry now. I'm going to be leaving well, here. Well, we're, <laughs> we're going to turn it around in a second, but I just I just want to follow up on that quickly. Um, you know, it's amazing how much deference Democrats still give to not not the lobbies, but the issues of guns, religion. And there was one other thing I can't remember what it is, but no, sorry. If they just don't, they just don't know how to negotiate about these things, right? So um, I think that uh, I think the solution to the problem is that we need to force every elected Democrat to to listen to us, and then and then we'll be fine. Oh yeah, that'll work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pro okay, probably not. I think the solution to the problem is for the DNC to pay off Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. <laughs> That's not going to happen either. So last segment, Judy, you missed the you missed this. So I I have I I have total faith that you're okay. going to be able to do this because the Democrats are not good at messaging. I don't understand why they haven't hired John Hamm or somebody from Madison Avenue. We are going to come up with a bumper sticker, or a, you know, a slogan that can fit on a bumper sticker that will get a message across and that will um help democratic voters understand what's at stake or one thing that's in stake so molly what do you what's your bumper sticker oh wait what i have to go first no uh, i mean i don't know kim yeah. do you have one no i'll go if, if kim needs a if kim has one then no i got, i mean i don't know if it'll fit on the bumper sticker but it's okay it could be a very big bumper sticker vote like your life depends upon it because Unless you're white and male, it probably does. <laughs> I love that. I am going to fit that on a bumper sticker. I don't That's care how good. big it is, or I love that because it's really totally good. true and terrifying. Okay, Molly. Uh, you know, I mean, mine would be do that the other guys are fascists. <laughs> like, you may yes. not like what we're doing, but at least we want democracy to keep going. That's uh, right. You know, that's always sort of how I feel. Yes. Uh, don't vote for fascism. Yeah. Basically. Judy, do you have one? Um, it's got to go on a bumper sticker. Yeah, preferably. I'm actually going to sell them and raise money for candidates if they're good. Okay. Um, no. How no pressure. about this? Um, if you don't like the Nazis, don't vote for one. <laughs> There you go. Um, and mine tonight would be my child's life matters more than your guns. Mm -hmm. And parenthetically, you fucking horrible people. But that, what about um, fuck <laughs> you if you vote Republican, you fucking asshole, <laughs> racist piece of shit? Is that, can that fit on? That? Sure. Listen, I can play around with fonts. <laughs> I've gotten quite good at the whole graphic design thing. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, you know, and I'll put it uh, like bright yellow font color on. I mean, bright yellow pants on a black background. And it'll, yeah, it'll pop and it'll glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Um, I am so grateful to all three of you. It's been a really I, this is the best show because you can curse. 
<laughs> is that, I didn't curse. That's why? I know. Well, you you're very it. classy, Kim. Nobody I'm has not a big swearer. It. it is not compulsory, <laughs> but it is encouraged. Because how the fuck do we get I can't this? take it anymore. I can't <laughs> fucking take it anymore. Okay. Well, listen, I mean, tough times, absolutely. But you guys do such incredible work. I'm grateful to all of you. You're out there every day speaking truth to power, getting the message to people who need to hear it um, in ways that are eloquent and uh, powerful and necessary. I thank all three of you so much for being here. Kimberly Atkinsor, Judy Gold, Molly Jongfast. Thank you, my friends. Um, I hope you're, you come back soon and keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. <laughs>